New data from NASA observatories revealed galactic violence in a system known as 3C321. The system has two galaxies in orbit around each other, both containing supermassive black holes. The larger of the two galaxies has a powerful jet coming from the area of its black hole, and the smaller galaxy appears to have swung into its path. The two galaxies are within 20,000 light years, quite close in galactic terms, so the effects of the jet on the smaller galaxy are likely to be great. They're approximately as far apart as the Earth is from the center of the Milky Way. On a cosmic scale, the event began only a short time ago, about one million years, and scientists believe that it could continue for 10 million to 100 million more years. The event offers scientists a rare opportunity to learn more about the jets. And we've actually calculated and shown that because jets are so light and fluffy, they won't actually have a huge amount of disturbance on the planetary atmospheres of a, of a, of a planet in that galaxy. However, the photons that come out of there are really, really energetic. And the photons, because they're focused into such a narrow, narrow beam, can have a really dramatic and profound effect. Jets from supermassive black holes produce high amounts of radiation, especially high-energy X-rays and gamma rays. These can be lethal in large quantities. This radiation, combined with particles traveling at nearly light speed, could severely damage the atmospheres of planets lying in the path of the jet. For example, if a jet were to hit Earth, it would destroy the atmosphere's upper layers, and much of life would end. However, the jet may not be all bad news. Once the destruction ends, the massive influx of energy and radiation could spark the formation of new stars and planets. A black hole is a region in space where matter is infinitely condensed. It's a singularity in space-time. They become so compact that light rays, basically, or not any form of energy can escape them because it's all bent backwards and falls back into the horizon of this object. If you're closer to the black hole than a certain distance, you will not be able to escape anymore. And this distance is called the Schwarzschild radius, and it's also referred to as the event horizon. So if you're inside the event horizon, you will never get out anymore. If the black hole is actually rotating, it has what physicists call spin, then even stranger effects occur. In particular, an effect occurs which is called frame dragging. In this effect, essentially space and time close to the black hole are actually dragged around with it as the black hole itself rotates. And as a result of this, any particle close enough to the black hole, say you or a star, um, would only be able to rotate around the black hole in the same sense as the black hole rotates. Because space is dragged so um, intensely that it is simply not possible to move in the opposite direction. It's like forcing a wind that is so strong that you can't resist it. There's no way to move forward. You can only move backward. The first black hole to be positively detected was named Cygnus X1. And the first astronomer to observe this, by definition, unobservable object was Tom Bolton. Well, you can't observe a black hole, as you point out, because nothing can escape from a black hole. What you do is to observe the surroundings of the black hole for indirect indications. If material actually falls into a black hole, it gets shredded apart and it heats up. And as it heats up, um, it starts emitting radiation. We can see evidence that matter is, is being thrown into the black hole because we see um, evidence of fast rotation around the black hole and matter getting very hot and emitting, for example, um, lines uh, from ionized iron, uh, moving at, at very fast speeds. Because a black hole um, is quite massive, any material, for example stars, that move close to it, 
will feel a lot of gravity. And as a result of this, these stars will move quite fast. 